As promised, I am back with part two, two, which will cover teams one through five. And let's go ahead and get started. And before I do so, I want to share just a little something here. So I'm going to preface this video by showing you this chart. I'm a data girl and I depend on the data to make decisions. So this shows the past 10 years from 2014 to 2024 of teams that have gone to the Elite Eight, how many times they've gone. That's in the blue bar. And then in the orange bar is showing how many times they've won the championship. So as you can see, some teams seem to make their way back there often and some teams seem to win often. So, <laughs> this is only the teams that have gone three or more times. There's several teams that have gone twice in the past 10 years. And then some, of course, that have only gone once to the Elite Eight. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to play that intro first and let's get started. Hi, and welcome to Davis Sports Report. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Coming in at number five is Gonzaga Bulldogs. Now, Gonzaga is one of those teams that's historically a contender, as, as you saw on the chart. In the past 10 years, they've appeared in the Elite Eight five times. Actually, since they didn't play in 2020, that's in the past nine years, which is over 50%, appearing last in 2023 in the Elite Eight. And then last year in 2024, they made it to the Sweet 16 where they lost to Purdue. Returning for the Bulldogs, is top score and rebounder six foot nine Graham Ike, who had 16.5 points per game and 7.4 rebounds. Also, Nolan Hickman, that averaged 14.5 points per game, 2.3 rebounds. As well, six foot 10 sophomore Brandon Huff, who's averaging 9.3 points per game, 3.4 rebounds, and we expect to see improvements from Brandon this year. Coming from the transfer portal is Michael Ajayi, transferring from Pepperdine, where he averaged 17.2 points per game and 9.9 .9 rebounds. And while Ajayi is an impressive player, Pepperdine suffered some pretty embarrassing losses to the big programs. So I'm not sure that he's gonna be as explosive facing the tougher schools, um, but we will see. Maybe he'll prove me wrong. Also, Khalif Battle coming from Arkansas, averaging 14.8 points per game and 3.3 rebounds. He was the second highest scorer for the Razorback, and he is a quick guard with a quick shot. I think he's going to be a great addition to the Bulldogs. Also, bringing in six foot guard Braden Smith, transferring from Colgate, averaging 12.5 points per game and 5.5 rebounds per game, who can shoot from well beyond the arc. 5.6 assists and 1.9 steals per game. Colgate also had a fairly embarrassing loss to Arizona, but Smith's playing style looks like it will transition just fine. The freshman coming in is four walk-ons, so they are none ranked in the top 100. You have Cade Ornis, Joaquin Azure Moore, Braden Lemke, and Ismael Diagni from Real Madrid. In summary, as I stated at the top, Gonzaga seems to make their way to the playoffs more often than not, and they are bringing back five veterans, some impressive transfers that will help them out with depth, and some untapped potential with the walk-on freshmen. All that being said, I'm going to give this ranking a thumbs up. Hard to bet against Gonzaga when the data shows they're not going to miss the party. They're probably not going to leave with the girl, but they're going to knock some people down on the way. <laughs> Moving on. Coming in at number four is Houston Cougars. Returning for the Cougars is LJ Cryer, averaging 15.5 points per game and 2.4 rebounds per game. Emmanuel Sharp, averaging 12.6 points per game and 3.5 rebounds per game. Jawan Roberts, averaging 9.5 points per game and 6.8 rebounds per game. Javier Francis, averaging 6 points per game and 5.2 rebounds per game. And Terrence Arsenio, averaging 5.5 points per game and 4.5 rebounds. Coming in from the transfer portal is Milos Yusin, transferring from Oklahoma, averaging 9 points per game and 3.4 rebounds and 4.4 assists. 
He drives to the rim and will also shoot from the three. He should be a great help for the Cougars this year. Coming in from the recruiting class is number 72, Mercy Miller. And for those of us old enough to experience 90s hip hops, Mercy is the son of Master P. Make him say, uh, na 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 na. You guys know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> After looking at the highlights, I'm seeing that Mercy has some skills, but I don't feel like he's ready to take a starting role just yet, but that is just my opinion. Also coming in is unranked Chase McCarthy that hits threes with such ease it makes you think if this kid was born with a ball in his hand. So we'll see what these two have to offer for Houston. In summary, while Houston does have an impressive number of players returning, including the top scorer, top rebounder, and top blocker, they will be missing a pivotal piece this year with Jamal Sheed that's now playing for the NBA's Toronto Raptors. The Cougars made its way to Sweet 16 in last year's March Madness, where they were taken out by Duke. I'm going to give this ranking a thumbs down, as I don't think they got better this year. Okay, moving right along. Coming in at number three is Yukon Huskies. Yukon lost their best players this summer to the NBA, and that would be Tristan Newton, Donovan Klingon, Cam Spencer, and Stephen Castle, and it seems like they were left with dust. So let's get into it. Returning for the Yukon is Alex Carabin, averaging 13.3 points per game and 5.1 rebounds per game. Hassan Diera, averaging 6.1 points per game, 3 rebounds per game, and 2.4 assists per game. And center, Samson Johnson, who averaged 5.4 points per game, and 2.8 rebounds per game. Coming in from the transfer portal is Aiden Mahaney from St. Mary's, averaging 13.9 points per game and 2.6 rebounds per game. And he looks to be a point guard that's great at getting the ball to the open man, driving it inside and shooting from the arch. I think he's going to be able to come in right away and help out. Also coming in a six foot ten senior, Terrace Reed Jr., transferring from Michigan, averaging nine points per game, seven point two rebounds, which they desperately need, and he converts those rebounds to point. He's not afraid to bang bodies down low to get those points. So again, another need for the Huskies. And coming in from the recruiting class, number nine ranked six foot seven small forward Liam McNeely. I think this could be another one and dunner. This young man shows up on both ends of the court. Him and his headband has high flying dunks, three point shots, jumpers, blocks, steals, draws the foul, and you can have whatever you like. Also coming in is number 36 ranked six foot one point guard, Ahmad Noel. And man, can he handle the ball and he will force his way inside. He's quick on his feet and he will be heading back to the other end before you even know he passed you. Also coming in is number 61 ranked small forward Isaiah Abrams, who with some summer workout can be ready for the physicality of D1. In summary, I seriously don't think that UConn will be as good as they were last year, but I also can't bet against a UConn team. They just seem to have the magic sauce. As you saw from the chart, when UConn comes, they go home with the prize. That being said, I am going to give this ranking a thumbs up for UConn at number three. Number two, Alabama Crimson Tide. Alabama is another team with a lot of players coming back. Top score guard Mark Sears averaging 21.5 points per game, 4.2 rebounds per game, and 4 assists per game. Also, top rebounder, 6 foot 11 forward Grant Nelson, averaging 11.9 points per game and 5.9 rebounds. Also coming back is guard Latrell Wrightsell Jr., averaging 8.9 points per game and 3 rebounds per game, as well as 6 foot 11 forward Jaron Stevenson, averaging 5.3 points per game and 2.7 rebounds per game. Coming in from the transfer portal is six foot four guard Chris Youngblood coming from USF, where he was last year's top scorer, averaging 15.3 points per game, 2.5 rebounds, and this is a great get for Alabama. And Youngblood's arsenal is his jump shot and three pointers. 
Also coming in a six foot five guard, Houston Mallet, coming from Pepperdine, averaging 14.7 points per game and 3.2 rebounds per game. Also coming in a six foot 11 center, Clifford Amorii from Rutgers, where he was the top rebounder, averaging 10.4 points per game and 8.3 rebounds per game. And lastly, a six foot one sophomore guard, Aiden Holloway, coming in from Auburn, averaging 7.3 points per game, 1.5 rebound, and 2.7 assists per game. And coming in from the recruiting class is number 11, six foot seven, small forward, Darian Reed, who played for Team USA U18. He's got great range and will be a good fit here. Also, number 22, six foot 11 center, Aiden Shirell, who is a great shooter, blocker, and rebounder, but I didn't see many highlights of him getting physical and exerting his weight on anyone. If he can learn to push some folks around down low, he's gonna be a great asset. Also coming in is number 32 ranked six foot two point guard, LeBaron Fallon. He knows how and where to move to get the shot, including the three point line. And he doesn't have a pretty shot, but really does that matter if it's going in? Also coming in is number 65 ranked six foot seven, small forward Nasir Cun Cunningham. Like most, if not all of the top 100 recruits, he has a great jump shot, dunks, three pointers, and rebound and return. In summary, most of the Crimson Tide starting lineup is coming back to Tuscaloosa. The only real missing piece is Aaron Estrada, who used all of his years of eligibility. Estrada contributed 13.4 points per game and 5.4 rebounds. But can he easily be replaced? I'm going to say yes, based on what the Tide has coming in. But that being said, Alabama was kind of a surprise to us making it to the Elite Eight last year beating UNC by only two points in the Sweet 16. And to be honest, they had a pretty easy route to the Elite Eight, facing off against Charleston in round one and Grand Canyon in round two. While Alabama is an amazing team, I'm not sure that I'd rank them number two, and therefore I am giving this ranking a thumbs down. <laughs> okay, moving right along. And coming in at number one is Kansas Jayhawks. Kansas is also returning its superstar, seven foot two center Hunter Dickinson, averaging 17.9 points per game and 10.9 rebounds per game. Hunter was the highest rebounder and blocker for the Jayhawks last year and second in scoring. Also returning is six foot seven forward, KJ Adams Jr., who averaged 12.6 points per game, 4.6 rebounds and three assists per game. Also returning is six foot two guard Dewan Harris Jr., who averaged 8.5 points per game, two rebounds per game, and a whopping 6.5 assists per game. And six foot three sophomore guard El Marco Jackson, averaging 4.3 points per game and 1.4 rebounds. They're gaining a lot from the transfer portal to complement its veterans. Starting off with guard David Coit from Northern Illinois, averaging 20.8 points per game. 3.2 rebounds and 1.2 steals per game. The Northern Illinois Huskies had a pretty rough go of it last year, ending with an 11 and 20 record, but I will give quite this, even in those massive losses, he was still putting up impressive double digit numbers for the most part. Also coming in is guard Zeke Mayo from South Dakota State, averaging 18.8 points per game, 5.7 rebounds per game and 3.9 assists per game where he was the top scorer and the top rebounder. The Jack Rabbits had a fairly impressive season and was eliminated in the first round by Iowa State. In that game, Mayo scored 19 points and five assists. Also coming in is guard AJ Storr from Wisconsin. He averaged 16.8 points per game and 3.9 rebounds. He was the top scorer for Wisconsin last year. The Badgers were put out in the first round of March Madness by James Madison, and in that game, Store was 0 of 3 from the three-point line, and based on my research, he had a total of 12 games where he was 0% from the three-point line. So if he can get his average up, I think he's going to be considered a true threat from the three. They're also gaining guard Ryland Griffin from Alabama, where last year he averaged 11.2 points per game. 3.4 rebounds per game, and Griffin was a pivotal part of the Crimson Tide starting lineup. Alabama made it to the final four and was eliminated by UConn. 
in the post, Griffin was 50% field goal percent and 48 from the three-point line. Very impressive stats. Lastly, it's going to be guard Shaquille Moore from Mississippi State, where he averaged 7.9 points per game, 2.2 rebounds, at a 46.8% field goal percentage. Coming in from the recruiting class is number 18 ranked six foot nine center, Flory Badunga, who will be a great backup for Hunter Dixon. This young man has great potential and if he doesn't see his playing minutes this year, he will absolutely get them next year once Hunter Dixon, who's a five year senior, is gone. Also coming in is number 34 ranked six foot four shooting guard, Rakis Passmore, the Donk King. <laughs> I can't wait until he goes pro. We want to see you in the dunk contest, young man. But yes, the Blue Jays have yet another shooting guard on the roster. And lastly is walk on six foot three guard, Will Thingvell, hometown Wichita, Kansas. In summary, Kansas made it to the second round of March Madness where they lost to Gonzaga. Their big loss from last year is Kevin McClure Jr. who was their top scorer and steals. He's now playing in the NBA for New York Knicks. I'm going to give Kansas this. They're going to be so deep that you're going to need binoculars to see to the bottom. They're going to be good. Very good. But I don't think they should be ranked number one. So I am going to give this one a thumbs down. And that's going to be it for the ESPN Way Too Early Top 10 Rankings. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please give it a thumbs up to help us get into the algorithms, share it with a friend. Also leave your comments below and watch part one if you haven't done so already. Thank you again so much for watching and thank you for the support that we've been getting on our channel. We truly, truly appreciate it. Have a good one and we will see you on the next one. Goodbye.